In the next 15 minutes, we're going to do two very important things. First, we're going to clearly answer the question, what is heart disease? Second, and most importantly, we're going to help you clearly understand a natural method that will address the underlying cause of most heart disease. By learning how to apply this critical information, you can substantially reduce your risk for what has become the number one killer of men and women worldwide. Absolutely life-changing information for you and your loved ones if you will apply this information. What brought you to this presentation is the question, what is heart disease? You're not alone. This question gets over 2 million searches per month. Why? Because heart and cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women worldwide. Just in the United States alone, almost 600,000 people lost their lives to this issue last year. People are searching for understanding and answers and we hope to provide you with both. Let's start out by clearly defining heart disease. It typically has two definitions. One is narrow, one is broad. Here is the narrow definition. Coronary heart disease, often simply called heart disease, is the main form of heart disease. It is a disorder of the blood vessels of the heart that can lead to a heart attack. A heart attack happens when an artery becomes blocked, preventing oxygen and nutrients from getting to the heart. End of quote. This narrow definition is from the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, and I want you to key into a very important clue to reducing this disease. The clue is in the statement that I just read. I've highlighted it for you in yellow. It is a disorder of the blood vessels of the heart. Before I show you how this plays out to unlock a natural method that can directly address this key, let's look at the broad definition. The broad definition for heart disease usually focuses on cardiovascular diseases, which are diseases of the heart and blood vessel system. This can include stroke, high blood pressure, angina or chest pain, congestive heart failure, cardiac arrhythmia or an irregular heartbeat. I don't know if you caught it, but the clue to most heart and cardiovascular diseases showed up again in the broad definition. I've highlighted it in yellow. Blood vessel system. Something is going on in the blood vessel system of your heart and throughout your body. But before I clearly reveal what this is, I need to add one more component. According to the American Heart Association, heart and blood vessel disease, cardiovascular disease, also called heart disease, includes numerous problems, many of which are related to a process called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a condition that develops when a substance called plaque builds up in the walls of the arteries. This buildup narrows the arteries, making it harder for blood to flow through. If a blood clot forms, it can stop blood flow. This can cause a heart attack or stroke. End of quote. In fact, at the time of this recording, the American Heart Association estimates that 74% of all cardiovascular disease is related to atherosclerosis, plaque formations within the arteries, and arterial sclerosis, calcification or hardening of the arteries. Both of these affect your blood vessels, but more specifically, they affect your endothelium, which lines all of your cardiovascular system. It's endothelial cell dysfunction or damage that is the underlying cause of most heart and cardiovascular disease. Now I've introduced you to a word and organ that most people, even those in the medical profession, know very little about. Yet your endothelium is now considered the largest secreting organ in your body and research in this area has been awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine. Your endothelium is only one cell thick. It lines the inside of your heart. The inside of your arteries, arterioles, venules and veins are lined by this organ. Your capillaries are just extensions of the endothelium. Research over the last 10 years has shown the endothelium to be a multifunctional organ involved in metabolic, immunologic, and cardiovascular functions. One of those functions is to convert the amino acid L-arginine into nitric oxide. This is so critical to cardiovascular health that the 1998 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to three American researchers who discovered how your endothelium converts the amino acid L-arginine into nitric oxide, the master signaling molecule of your entire cardiovascular system. One of these Nobel laureates is Dr. Louis J. Ignaro. 
He wrote a national bestseller called No More Heart Disease. I like the focus on the subtitle of his book. It says how nitric oxide can prevent, even reverse, heart disease and strokes. Heart disease is the number one killer of men and women, and stroke is the number three killer. Additionally, a stroke is the number one disabler of people worldwide. Yet here is a Nobel Prize winner in medicine, clearly stating to us that nitric oxide, produced by your endothelium, can prevent and even reverse heart disease and strokes. Additionally, Dr. John Cook, the director of vascular medicine at Stanford University, published a book called The Cardiovascular Cure. Notice his subtitle, How to Strengthen Your Self-Defense Against Heart Attack and Stroke. Dr. Cook goes on to say the following, this book will introduce you to the magic that is inside your blood vessels. It comes in the shape of a molecule, one of the simplest molecules found in nature. This molecule is nitric oxide, or NO, a substance so powerful that it can actually protect you from heart attack and stroke. Best of all, your body can make it on its own. Nitric oxide is your body's own built-in natural protection against heart disease. End of quote. Before we talk about some of the specific functions of nitric oxide, I'd like to put this slide on the screen to help us clearly identify three keys to solving most heart disease. 77% of Americans treated for a first stroke had high blood pressure. 69% of Americans who have a first heart attack have high blood pressure. 74% of Americans with congestive heart failure have high blood pressure and 66 percent of Americans with diabetes have high blood pressure. As you can clearly see, high blood pressure is a common ailment of all four of these cardiovascular health issues. Additionally, a blood clot formation that lodges in a vascular artery is usually the reason for a stroke or heart attack. The vast majority of these diseases are a result of endothelial cell dysfunction and its inability to properly produce nitric oxide. This information helps us to identify three keys to solving most cardiovascular or heart disease issues. They are controlling blood pressure, preventing blood clots, and reversing endothelial cell dysfunction. Here's how nitric oxide directly addresses each of these keys. First, nitric oxide is your body's most powerful vasodilator. What this means is that nitric oxide causes the smooth muscle of your vascular wall to relax, which helps to keep your blood pressure in a normal range. That would directly benefit our first key of controlling blood pressure. Second, nitric oxide keeps blood platelet cells from sticking together to naturally prevent blood clots. This would reduce the number one cause of strokes and heart attacks and directly address our second key. Third, nitric oxide helps to repair damage done to the endothelium and keep it free from plaque formations and calcification. As I've already stated, the American Heart Association estimates that 74% of all cardiovascular disease is related to atherosclerosis, plaque formations within the arteries, and arterial sclerosis, or calcification and hardening of the arteries. Proper levels of nitric oxide help to prevent both of these issues, and it directly addresses our last key of helping to reverse endothelial cell dysfunction. So how does your endothelium create this nitric oxide? Well, there are two important amino acids needed. They are L-arginine and L-citrulline. Your endothelium directly converts L-arginine into nitric oxide, but it needs a certain level. Here's a direct quote from Dr. Ignaro. My research shows that L-arginine in doses smaller than 4 to 6 grams produce almost zero increase in nitric oxide. So it is in essence an all-or-nothing proposition. You must receive the full dose of L-arginine. End of quote. For you to get what we call a therapeutic increase in nitric oxide, you need to consume 4 to 6 grams of L-arginine at one time, or an average of 5 grams. But L-arginine by itself is not the complete answer. The reason why is because it only creates a short-lived window of improved nitric oxide production. To lengthen your endothelium's ability to properly produce therapeutic levels of nitric oxide, you also need the amino acid L-citrulline. While L-citrulline doesn't directly produce nitric oxide, 
What it does is recycles L-arginine so that your endothelium can continue to produce nitric oxide over an extended period of time. Again, according to Dr. Ignaro, it is the synergy between L-arginine in a large enough dose, the L-citrulline, and the key antioxidants that creates dramatic increases in your body's nitric oxide production. Without the proper combination of these nutrients, which so many other programs lack, you will receive little to no benefit from nitric oxide therapy." End of quote. Once people understand how critically important this is to their cardiovascular health, they typically want to know how they can bring these two amino acids into their body. Your choices center on either food or supplementation as the key to properly nourishing your endothelium. Most research indicates that for you to receive a therapeutic benefit from L-arginine, you need to consume at least 5 grams of this amino acid at one time. So I selected 6 food items that I thought would be common food choices. I did the math conversions to look at how much food you would need to eat to take in 5 grams of L-arginine. I also looked at the number of calories and grams of fat it would bring into your body. As you can see by the slide, peanuts provide the smallest quantity of food, but they pack on 70 grams of fat and 918 calories. When you examine this slide, you can see that one can of beans or two cans of tuna or almost one pound of chicken are needed on a daily basis. For L-citrulline, you only have one good food choice, which is watermelon. Unfortunately, 60% of the L-citrulline is contained in the rind portion, which most people typically throw away. So unless you juice the entire watermelon, you will not get adequate amounts of L-citrulline to help turbocharge your endothelium's ability to properly produce nitric oxide. Which brings us back to the question, is it better to get these amino acids through food or supplementation? If you choose supplementation, then one of the best is ProArginine Plus from Synergy Worldwide. In fact, many believe it's the best nitric oxide supplement in the marketplace. It has been intentionally designed to help nourish your endothelium to help it properly produce nitric oxide for improved cardiovascular health and function. ProArginine Plus comes with both L-arginine and L-citrulline at the needed levels to help turbocharge your endothelium's ability to properly produce nitric oxide over an extended period of time. In addition to the L-arginine and L-citrulline, ProArginine Plus also includes the following ingredients. I'm not going to go into detail about each ingredient, but I would like to highlight two, which will help you better understand the science that went into the design of this product. I want to highlight vitamins D3 and K2. You need vitamin D3 to help your body properly absorb calcium. You need vitamin K2 to help your body properly direct where calcium goes. Calcium is extremely important for your body, not just for bone health, but also for a wide variety of cellular reactions, one of which is the creation of nitric oxide. Let me use the following illustration to help you understand the importance of calcium in nitric oxide production. If you walk into a dark room and you want the lights on, you flip the switch on the wall. If you look at nitric oxide as the light, the wiring in the wall as the enzymatic process the endothelium uses to create nitric oxide, and L-arginine as the electricity, then the switch is calcium. Calcium starts the reaction. Vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 help to regulate your calcium levels in your bloodstream so that this reaction can properly take place. So what does all this information mean to you? Well, a healthy endothelium equals a healthy cardiovascular system. The health of your endothelium and its ability to properly produce nitric oxide can potentially reduce your risk for heart and cardiovascular disease. We believe Progen Plus can help you combat the negative effects of premature cardiovascular aging. And since most of your life revolves around your cardiovascular system, any improvements typically result in improved cell, tissue, and organ function. This leaves us with a final question. Are you ready to experience the heart and cardiovascular health benefits of Progen Plus by taking our 90-day challenge with an unconditional money-back guarantee? If your answer is yes, then please contact us at the Synergy Co-op. I've placed our contact information on the screen. We're part of a team whose mission is to help save a million lives. 
will work with you and your health care provider to help you properly nourish your endothelium for improved nitric oxide production. And if for any reason you're not satisfied with your results during the 90-day health challenge, then you can return all the product, used or unused, for a full refund. Please call Dan Hammer or Gene LaValle if you have any questions about this remarkable product.